Hi, welcome to day two of Piping Bird. All right, today's lesson, we're going to implement the optional feature from yesterday, which was to display the game over symbol. It looks like this. Uh, let me go back there for a second. All right, when Piping Bird falls to the ground, you display a game over image instead of the out to the console. In number two, when you're using Fifi Bird, notice that Fifi Bird's angle changes depending on its speed. So if you press up, Fifi Bird's angle moves up for a little bit, and when he falls down, his angle changes the faster he falls. You can see there, Fifi Bird was almost at a vertical angle because he was falling very, very fast. So that's our goal for today. Before we begin, however, let's talk about magic numbers. Looking at our code from yesterday, we have something kind of like this. We have dy is 0, gravity is 1.3, or whatever you choose. And down here, when you press the up arrow, Piper Bird's given a boost of negative 15, or whatever you choose. Well, the point is, a magic number is a number that you just kind of throw into your program uh, within the body of the code. And for us, we have dy equals negative 20. And down here, I have negative 15. But this is a magic number. Because later on, we have a lot more code here. It's really hard to find negative 15 and know what to change where. So it's better if we make this a constant right now rather than leaving it as a fixed number here. So instead of putting negative 15 here, let's define a variable called boost speed and define that up top with the rest of our variables. This is a much smarter decision, and overall, it'll save you a lot of time later when you want to modify a program. So double boost speed and it equals negative 15. That's a much smarter decision. So in general, if you have numbers floating throughout your code, turn those numbers into constants or variables at the top of your program, and you'll save yourself a lot of headache later on. So there's magic numbers. All right, next up, on to the homework from yesterday. The feature was to make sure Thunderbird stops when he hits the edge of the world. So here, I'm going to enter that code between when you press the up arrow and updating dy. So I'm going to put it here. First, let's add a comment. If Flappy Bird drops out of the world, then game over. And to write this code, I assume it knows from yesterday, so I'm just going to go through it here. Um, to find out if Flappy Bird has reached the edge of the world, we'll say if Flappy Bird's Y position is greater than the edge of the world, which is get world dot get height, then in this case we want to say game over. So for now we'll just print it out. And then also the second thing is we want to stop the program. So yesterday I said that there was an optional there was a function under the Greenfield class. Let's go there now. Help menu the Greenfield class documentation. Go to the Greenfield class. And there is a function here that will stop the world. Let's look for it here. Uh, it's here. So there's start and there's stop. So stop is the one we want. Since this is a static function of the Greenfoot class, in order to use this, you say Greenfoot and then dot whatever function you want. In our case, Greenfoot dot stop. So let's go back to our code and enter that in. So after saying game over, I'm going to say Greenfoot dot stop. Let's check this out and make sure it works. Perfect. So you can't see it on this screen, but here it is. So game over was popped up in the console window. And secondly, if I press up arrow, nothing happens because the program physically stopped. There it is again. Same thing. Game over. Up arrow doesn't respond anymore because the game has been terminated. So perfect. Now instead of popping up game over here, we want to display a game over image, which is way cooler than this. So let's clear this out, close this down, and let's add a game over image. Right click actor, choose new subclass, let's call this game over. Go back to your image folder where you downloaded the five numbered images, and choose the game over image. Say OK, recompile. So now we have a second actor, that's the game over image. The goal now, if you go to the Fiber Bird code, is when the game is over, instead of printing game over, we want to show the game over image in the center of the screen. So here's how to do this. All right, first, we have to create.
create a game over it, uh, actor. So to do that, you can do it the same way that we did for Happy Bird. So game over, call it what you want, I'll call it game over. Notice the spelling difference. This is the object type, and this is the variable name. So the lowercase g versus uppercase g makes it a different name. So game over equals new game over object. So this will create a game over object named game over. And now we need to add this to the world. Now to add something to the world, only the world can do this. And currently, we're inside the code for Flappy Bird. So we can't just say add object, because Flappy Bird cannot do an add object command. However, Flappy Bird's world can. So first we'll have to get world. This is a command that Flappy Bird can do, because Flappy Bird's an actor. After we get the world, then we can ask the world to add object. So that's the key. First get the world, and then tell that object to add, in this case, the game over object. Then you specify an x and y coordinate where you want to exist. In the center of the screen, that would be the center of the world. But again, we can't just call uh, get width divided by 2. This doesn't work because this would be asking for the width of Flappy Bird, not the width of the world. So once again, we're going to have to say get world, then dot get width. That will get the width of the world. Same thing for the height. Oh, don't forget divided by 2. For the height, get world first. And then taking that, do get height. And divide that by 2. So here's the code. You can pause the video and see it more clearly if you need to. Let's try this out and make sure it actually works. All right, so there's Flappy Bird responding to key presses. So when I go beyond the edge of the screen, there's our game over display right in the center of the world. Perfect. OK, next, let's add the feature of when Flappy Bird's angle, when Flappy Bird's flying, his angle depends on his speed. For the most part, I'll leave this to you, but I'll get you started. So back to the Flappy Bird code. To do this, you're going to have to just use if statements. So let me clean up the code here. And where you put it is kind of up to you. I would say, well, for now, let's just put it here. So to do this, you're going to need a couple things. We'll need if statements. Perhaps some else ifs. So here's your general code structure. All right, so I have a statement of if statements, if, else if, else if, and so on. And what you put in here is if Flappy Bird's velocity is a certain thing, for example, if dy is between negative 10 and positive 10, and this is obviously not Java code, it's your job to put the code in. So if dy is between negative 10 and positive 10, then I want to set the angle of Flappy Bird to a certain amount. So in this case, set angle to uh, whatever, let's say 30 degrees. So here's the code to set Flappy Bird's angle. Let's find the API for actor. So let's right click actor and scrolling down with the right function. Let's look for a function inside of actor that can change Flappy Bird's angle. There's get rotation to get the angle of Flappy Bird. And then secondly, there's set rotation. So set rotation is what we want. And you pass it an angle to face Happy Bird or Flappy Bird. So here we'll say set rotation, and then you have to pass in an angle as an integer. So 30 would be just written as this 30. So take this idea and complete the if statements to say if dy, the speed, is a certain amount then set the angle to something. If you complete this series of these, you know, for example, dy is between negative 10 and 10, do one thing. If dy is between 
11 and something else, do something else, and so on, you can get this effect here, that when you boost Fuckbird upward, he faces upward, and as he drops, watch here, he falls more and more uh, vertically. So as he goes down, it's not dependent on his height, it's his speed. If his speed is a certain amount, then his angle changes. So that's your goal for today. And then once you have angles working, go ahead and modify all of your variables until Fiberbird's motion feels right. For example, currently in my demo program, Fiberbird is way too fast, at least for me. This does not feel right. He bounces too high, he falls too fast, and so for me, to make these feel better, I'll need to modify all three values. What does the gravity pull with, and how much is his boost speed? The initial DUI doesn't matter so much. All this is is when Fiber starts the program, does he have any upward velocity to begin with? It's just mostly these two variables that matter the most 1.3 and negative 15. Adjusting these will give Flappy Bird a different feel. And so will his angle choices. So if you choose a DUI between certain angles for the rotation, that will affect the speed. Um, here's my completed program. This one feels much better than the original. It's still a little bit slow because my speed slider actually is slightly slow. Here's the full speed. Actually, not even there. I still missed it. Right there, right. Here's my full speed. So to me, this feels fairly similar to the actual Flappy Bird. It's not easy, but it's not impossible either. And so, so far I'm happy with the numbers that I've chosen here, but you got to find your own numbers. Find whatever feels the best for you, and good luck.